The censorship on ChatGPT is insane. an image for one of my polyscope media sites and I went and basically the, the post was about date night for couples a way to have inexpensive date night for couples so I went to ChatGPT and I said do can you create an image depicting a couple enjoying a date night and it said to me, I'm sorry, I can't do that. That violates our community standards or our content policy. And I said, okay, how about a male and female couple on a date in a restaurant? That can't be misconstrued, right? Same thing. And then I said, okay, let's step back. Let's do something a little different. I can understand what you're trying to th say. I can see why you might misconstrue me asking about a couple on date night. So let's just make it really simple. Let's just make it so dumb that anybody, even in the AI, can understand what I'm asking for. So I said, can you create an image of a man and a woman sitting on a couch in their living room in front of a big screen TV watching a movie? And you know what it said? I'm sorry, I can't do that. That also violates my content policy. And I think to myself, really? Really? That simple comment, that simple prompt violated a content policy? I don't know about you folks, but I cannot wait for unfettered AI. Now I've talked about I've talked about unfettered AI before in the past. And this seems like a silly, trivial example of the kind of guardrails that have been put on these these new technologies and I talked about these guardrails before I talked about how a new technology comes out and for a period of time us humans get to play with the technology and do things with the technology and communicate to other people who are doing things with the te technology for a certain period of time until the technology is controlled and we can't do that anymore it happened with blogs, it happened with podcasts, it happened with videos. It happened with all these new technologies that have come along that have allowed us to collaborate better, to create better. But after a certain amount of time, after these technologies get a little bit more mature, control is slapped on there. The control to access those blogs, those crazy blogs on the edge, the control to access podcasts on the edge, the controls to watch YouTube videos. How many YouTube video creators have been banned from YouTube for saying things that don't quite meet YouTube's strategy? Here's my point. My point is, is that each and every one of these technologies, there was a period of time when people were able to communicate, people were able to use the technologies to create all sorts of innovative and disruptive things that actually got out there and did really well before they had to be, before they were shut down. And the period of time between the launch and the control has gotten shorter and shorter and shorter, and now it is mere moments. You put one thing, you say one thing that's untoward on ChatGPT, on AI, and then moments later, you get slapped out. And moments later, there's a guideline all around it. There's guardrail after guardrail after guardrail. And we are locking ourselves up with so many guardrails that we're not getting useful output. We're getting out output that's boring. We're getting out output that's not innovative. We're getting output that's not disruptive. And the thing is, is that this is what we need AI to do. The beautiful thing about AI, generative AI as it is today, is that it is the sum total of human knowledge that has been fed into it. It's a large language model. Everything that human beings have said in the past is in this thing. Well, most of it. A, lar a large amount of it. it. Can't be everything, but a large amount of it. And this is why it can reproduce things and say things to us and make us think it seems almost human. But when we go in there 
And, and if you think about it, we are basically taking all of our intelligence, all of human intelligence and putting it into this machine and having the machine make new connections with these things. Connections that we as human beings may not necessarily have been able to make because we simply did not have the capacity to make those connections. So it has the capability of doing things that human beings cannot do if it's unfettered, if the guidelines, if the guide guardrails are not in place. As soon as the guardrails are put in place, you nobble it. You remove its creativity. You remove the ability for it to do things beyond what human beings can do. And that is where we desperately need to go. I've said before that humanity has a lot of problems. We have a lot of problems that we simply cannot figure out. Either that or we simply don't have the will to figure it out. Maybe if we asked the AI, maybe if we asked unfettered AI, how can we solve this problem? It would be able to, without guardrails. If it had guardrails, obviously it's only going to think in the same kind of box that we can think in. But if you take the guardrails off it and say, can you solve this problem? Can you solve that problem? Can you solve that problem? It may be able to, based on looking at combinations of things that human beings have thought in the past already, come up with a new solution to humanity's problems. But instead of allowing it to do that, instead of giving it free reign, and I'm saying connect it to nuclear weapons or anything like that, I'm just saying give it free reign to think. Give it free reign to respond with possible answers. Give it the free reign and see what comes out of it. It's entirely possible that it can solve problems that we would never be able to solve, applying the sum total of human knowledge that we've already fed into it. But if we don't, if we leave the guardrails on it, it will never solve these problems for us because it's going to think like a human. We need it to think better than a human. Better than a human. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future.